Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to do some ice dyeing on some yarn outside with jacquard acid dyes. To start off, I pre-soaked 100 grams of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn in some tap water uh, with one tablespoon of white vinegar. And now I'm going to take this and sort of spread out it out as much as possible. I'm on sort of a thing of, let's see, what do I have on here? I've got like this basket over a kitty litter pan and I'm just trying to get things spread out. And so we will be adding some ice on top of this and then sprinkling on some dry jacquard acid dye powder mixed with citric acid on top. Not sure how well this will work, but we're gonna give it a shot. Today is about, it's going to be about 95 degrees outside. I am trying to decide if I want like a thick layer of ice cubes or if I want a fair layer of ice cubes. Clearly, they are not going to reach all the way around the edge, but unlike snow, it is a little easier to position it. The reason behind having the kitty litter container below is to catch um, any runoff which we could use um, and that runoff we can use to get more uh, color at the end if we need to. So I could alternatively have the whole thing just laying on the bottom already but what that would do is then it would immediately be submerged in all the melt and you can see I'm even able to sort of like stick these onto the side a little bit. A little bit. It's kind of fun. It's like building a castle out of ice. I think this technique would be so much fun to do onto some kind of plank. And that is definitely something I've done once before but it's, that's definitely something I want to try again. But all right, we've got our ice mountain set up, and now let's go get our dye. Okay, inside my house while wearing my respirator gloves and safety goggles, I took about that much citric acid powder and put in a heaping healthy glob of jacquard purple. And now, I'm just gonna start layering this on top of these ice cubes. And I picked this color because I have observed some breaking with it. And so I thought that that could be really interesting to see. Now, you can probably tell that I am working outside. And that is because of the mess and the weight potential as things melt. Uh, but what's interesting, Look at all that pink that we see on the ice itself. That is kind of cool. Uh, I'm trying to make sure to do a really nice sort of even-ish coverage on here. There's clearly some powder that's going all the way through and getting on the yarn already, which I am totally, totally okay with. Um, I know there will definitely, definitely be some white left behind here, but yeah, I, I think that this will be really, really kind of fun. Um, as for the citric acid, I wanted to be able to layer a lot of powder on top without um, using like an absurd amount of the acid dye and I'm using a lot of acid dye. Uh, even though we're outside, I'm not planning on this being like a solar dyeing technique. I am planning to go inside and steam this once the ice has melted. But given the brightness of the day today and with the citric acid also, this is already starting to melt and we're seeing drips go down. Let's see, I'm trying to pay attention to the edges. 
but there. That is pretty, pretty fun. Okay, now clearly a lot of the powder that's gone directly on the yarn is no longer sort of liquid, but there is definitely still some powder around, and so in an attempt to like not have powder around, I am taking some of the pre-soak water that does have the vinegar in it, and I am pouring it around this edge. Uh, just so that way, again, just sort of making all of this powder in here wet. Um, and I can tell you right now, I definitely see some pink and purple breaking, which I think is awesome. The first time I did this on a sock blank, and really the only time, I laid it flat, I layered the ice cubes on top, I did drops of liquid food coloring in different places, and then I sort of sprinkled on some Kool-Aid after the fact. I think it could be really fun to play around with this using liquid dyes and let the pattern of the dyes run down in a really interesting way because of the ice and just the imperfections and the rivers that will happen there. Uh, I know from snow dyeing that if you want to get more complete coverage of color on your yarn, then you definitely want to use a non-superwash yarn, which we're not doing today. We're using a superwash yarn. So there will be white behind because these colors are going to start striking already. But I tried to arrange it in a way that will still give us a lot of nice balance to the yarn. And honestly, I just really want to see what's going to happen here. I set this up at about 9 a.m. and it looks like a lot of the color is already sort of running down the ice cubes onto the yarn. Probably in a large part due to the addition of that citric acid, but you can see these like rivers and grooves on the ice cubes just because the salt, that citric acid, is making it melt. And it doesn't hurt that it's approaching 95 deg degrees Fahrenheit today. I would have tried coming and exploring this in a few different ways today uh, using acid dyes, but I do need to go make more ice cubes, and so that is sort of my rate limiting factor. But yeah, and maybe, who knows, maybe I'll regret the fact that I only used one color of dry acid dye powder, but since it's a color that looks like it breaks, I was curious what we might see. and. I see, just from here and looking a little bit at these edges, I see a lot of purple. I also see some patches that look more pink and a little more blue. So I'm really excited by that. And there's definitely going to be some white behind. <laughs> looking at the bottom, all you see is white. So you can see the color hitting the yarn. But if you look sort of below that basket, uh, there's not a lot of color that has gone through all the way, at least not yet. One hour in, a lot has melted, and our run through is looking fairly pink. But if you look sort of at the bottom, which might be a little hard, there we go, to see, uh, most of the color is on that surface, which is what I expected. It's 11.30, which is about two and a half hours after I've set this up. And it seems like all of our ice is just about gone. And if we take a look at the bottom, you can see that the color penetration is really, really, really shallow. Interestingly, the water beneath is uh, like a really pretty pink, but most of the pigment does appear to be in the yarn itself. Whoa hoo There is no question that we see some color breaking in here. Um, and it's not just a saturation thing, but I see more blue violets and then some there's some more fuchsia magenta e sections in the yarn but i'm gonna go get some gloves and then we can open this up and take a look at this game i find snow dyeing and ice dyeing so much fun to actually do but one of the big issues for me is that the colorways end up being fairly unbalanced but let's take a look um ooh. Actually, we got some color penetration through to the other side. Let me just completely flip it 
before we move it. Okay, see there's some areas where that color did come through. But as I showed at those check-ins, <laughs> I mean, the amount of color that went through is not extreme. And I'm curious now, if I were to squeeze it, that color is seeming clear. So squeezing this, uh, well, let's open it up first. Oh, this is pretty. Okay, because of the way we laid it out, uh, I'm still not sure how balanced it would be. So like in this section where we, there's a lot of heavy purple, when you flip it over, there's not as much there. It is beautiful. There's no question this is beautiful. Um, it's just, ooh, that's some red there. Uh, it's just how much balance is this really? But ironically, I'm still planning on steam setting this, but you know, just squeezing it, this color is very much in here. And there are some spots like in this area that feel like the color could go all the way across. Uh, like here. Okay, it's not as unbalanced as I thought. Not perfect. Um, definitely spreading out the yarn across sections like this is important so you can try to get color all the way through. But I'm pretty happy with this and I don't think I am going to dunk it in that bath. Uh, yeah, I, ugh, I'm debating guys. I'm really debating. Um, I mean the color seems pretty well set. I do want to steam it. Uh, and I'm sitting here really just talking to myself. Um, yeah, okay, I'm gonna go steam set it. In an effort to leave no dye behind, we're gonna dye some more yarn. I grabbed a hundred grams of Knitpick's Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. This is dry. Ooh, look at that purple. I am only wearing one glove. <laughs> and I am slowly working this in. Mainly because you can see these colors are striking pretty quickly. Um, so we're almost getting something like dip dyed out of here because that color um, ultimately is not a ton of color that was left. Uh, and so we are just trying to soak this up and we're getting a, yeah, something very kind of fun, pastel -y. Uh, we've been doing this outside and we are definitely warm. This water has some warmth to it. It is not, um, it's not cold at all. And oof, this is pretty. I am loving this. It, we could have gotten more even color coverage, but man, oh now the sun has come. These colors have struck quickly. Um, this is beautiful. So. With the solar dyeing I normally do, I will uh, just leave the yarn in a can or something enclosed so it can sort of keep that heat. But I think, wow, we have absorbed all of that color really, really quickly. Um, that is awesome. And I love this pale pastel purple that we've ended up with. Oh goodness, um, I am really debating what to do, but I think I'm just going to leave it in here for a while. I debated trying to just leave it in the sun and then wash it and see what happens, but I think I'm just going to let this sit here, soak in this vinegar solution outside for a while. I'll go ahead and place this over it just to keep anything from flying in, but then once my steamer basket frees up with the, the yarn that I ice dyed, then I'll go ahead and add this yarn and steam it to set this color. I think it's beautiful. I am steaming the yarn in a steamer basket for 20 minutes to set the color. But man, ice dyeing outside in the summer is so much faster than uh, snow dyeing inside in the winter. 
but I mean this is this is really really pretty really beautiful um, I'm not sure if we got a lot of patterning from the ice itself we got some beautiful sort of all over color but actually we got some really cool breaking because of the different rates that the color went on so anyway I'm gonna set this aside to cool because the 20 minutes are up and then once it's cool we can go and wash it so our leave no dye behind yarn was already pretty warm <laughs> uh, there was already some good warmth to it but I just brought it inside I did squeeze out the liquid which was clear and now we are gonna steam it for 20 minutes on the steamer basket all right the 20 minutes are up Ooh, nice and steamy and now we can remove our yarn to let it cool so that way we can go wash it there is something quite beautiful about this um, the color the breaking is very, very subtle, but I do enjoy the contrast between this purple and the white that is there. And, I mean, you can see that all of this color is in our yarn. Um, I think that this, again, is a technique that would be really, really cool on some kind of soft length, um, because I think that you'd be able to see some cool patterning. Um, and I just added a little bit of some clear dish soap. But, yeah, it could also be fun to play around with two different colors of acid dyes. I've done different colors of Kool-Aid with snow dyeing and stuff. So I just really wanted to see what would happen with a single color. And if it's the extreme breaking or not. But anyway, I'm going to wash out all the soap, put the spread like some dryer, and then hang it up to dry. Let's wash this really, really pretty yarn. I'm not expecting to see any bleeding because of the way we saw it just soak up that color even before we added heat. Um, I am going to keep washing it. I'm gonna use a little bit of clear dish soap. Then I'm gonna put the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. Here is our ice dyed yarn and then our yarn mop. Both of these turned out really beautiful. Uh, we added a lot of ice cubes on top of our pre-soaked yarn and then sort of speckled on the jacquard purple dye. And the colors absolutely did break. A subtle breaking, but they did break. In the yarn you can see more sort of iris purple patches and then more red patches. Uh, the dye themselves, when you speckle it, you do see red and blue speckles. Um, and so they did blend together a bit on the yarn, but I'm really excited to play with this for just a low immersion speckling technique in the future. I was curious if we would see a vast difference in the rates that the color struck the yarn, meaning that maybe we would see one of the colors sort of hit in these smaller patches and then the other color might strike slower and spread out. But overall, all the color struck pretty quickly um, giving us a lot of white behind in the yarn. Since we put our yarn on top of a basket, um, the ice melt sort of went down below the water, and so the yarn was not sitting in that melt. If it were, then we might see some more color spreading. But really, most of what dripped through was probably areas where the dye was dripping around the yarn. Because as you can see in our mop, there wasn't very much color left. After the ice melted, the water was a little warm and we took our skein of yarn and just soaked it up slowly, creating this dip dyed effect because those colors were striking pretty quickly. And I think that these are so different, but they're both really beautiful and fairly complementary, honestly. The final ice dyed yarn feels more balanced than I initially thought. Is it gonna be the exact same if you're gonna knit from one end versus the other? No, but I don't think it's gonna be all color on the first half and no color on the second. There will be some asymmetry there, but the balance I think is pretty good from looking through the skein. And then obviously this one is pretty well balanced. We've got more purple on one side and then it gets lighter and sort of a repeating type of colorway. 
It could be really interesting to do this ice dyeing and then dip our ice dyed yarn into the melt. Or leave it on the bottom of the pan so that way that melt can surround the uh, yarn that we're dyeing. There's many different ways you could play around with this. And I know that I need to go make some more ice before summer is over. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you would like to see more of my dyeing adventures, subscribe, like, turn on notifications. I publish two new yarn dyeing videos every week, and you don't want to miss a thing. And if you love some of the yarn I create so much, you wish you could have it at home to play with it, you can. Uh, my Etsy shop, Chemnitz Creations, is filled with hand dyed yarn featured in my videos. In each listing, you can see the video title and the date it's published. So as you check it out, you might see some sneak peeks for some content that's coming up soon. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.